Hello everyone and welcome to another gameplay trailer review reaction video. I want to say firstly thank you so much for all of your positive comments and reactions to my Fable uh, reaction trailer which I did a few days ago. It has done so well. I am so so shocked and just very very grateful for everyone giving me some great comments, um, telling me your thoughts as well which is fantastic. It's a game particularly that I wanted to look at the trailer and react to it. I was very excited for that trailer. So it's just great to do something that I'm interested in and you guys are as well. So thank you for that. Today, I'm looking at three games that equally look very interesting to me. I think they're very similar in style. They're all RPGs from what I understand. I don't know much more about any of these games, but I wanted to have a look with you guys. Let me know what you think as well. There's three today the first one is actually out in July so this uh, extended gameplay trailer I think dropped maybe just under a week ago it has been solid on the gaming front with all of these new games coming out over the next year it is so congested but so exciting that keeping up with the content is just nuts so it's great for me it's great for all of you guys that love games as well I am sure I want to have a look at this one this is called Flintlock the C Siege of Dawn. So I think this trailer came out maybe five or six days ago. I did see a, a little overview of it, but I thought, no, I'm going to wait. I want to have a look at that properly. I want to record it, give my general reaction to it. Let me see what the actual game is giving us. This is the extended trailer as well. So it's about nine minutes, which means it should be able to sell to me what it is going to offer. So let's get into it. I think this was done by A44 Games coming out in July 2024. That's literally what I know. So I'm going to play it now and we'll just see. Oh, so you have a, a companion maybe, which is always nice. I like animals, obviously. I don't even know. Hi, I'm Simon Dasan, creative director at A44 Games. And I'm Dale Pugh, associate art director. We're an indie studio based in New Zealand. Our previous Ooh. game, Ashen, was released in 2018. Ashen. And haven't we're excited played Ashen. to bring you this gameplay overview for our upcoming title, Flintlock, The Siege of Dawn. Well, that was a pretty cool mechanic. Flintlock is set in the world of Kian, 10 years after the door to the Great Below was opened, unleashing the gods and their armies of the dead. The lands of Kian are overrun. Ooh. Coalition army is tied up in an increasingly hopeless Goals. siege outside the city walls. Lovely. There is no one to defend the small towns and villages against the roaming hordes of the dead. Huh. You play as Nor Vanek, a flintlock weapons expert in the Coalition army, along with Enki, <gasps> a mysterious fox-like companion who enhances your combat skills with his magical abilities. Oh, I love that. On your Got a journey, magic you'll companion. combine gunpowder, magic and steel mm. to build your character into a fabled god. <gasps> You'll also meet and recruit your former coalition oh. team to devise a plan to break the siege. Some sort of strategies to it. Interesting. I wonder if those are NPCs or... As you travel or throughout the world, you can establish NPCs your caravan at key people rest locations. people that you can play with. This is your chance to rest and prepare for your next adventure. The caravan will grow as you meet ah. and recruit former coalition team members to your cause. Maybe it's online playing Each team member is an expert in their chosen field sure. and unlocks crafting abilities and additional quest content. It would be nice if it was a choice. You can play online or good to rest just at the NPCs. Campfire and see what's new. Don't usually play like MMO games. Building on our experience with Ashen, Flintlock retains elements of the Souls genre and infuses it with rapid mobility. This is exactly why I was and already pulled in then the from the beginning. Be called Souls Light. Flintlock's combat seamlessly interweaves melee and flintlock weapons with magic and rhythmic battles where combos chain together. You can see some very familiar Souls-like combat there. I Extreme mobility that. is a big part of the gameplay. It allows fluid and fast-paced action using your explosive like black powder jump and dodge ability. That makes sense. There are three main categories of weapons. I think it's just the weapons. combat that's going to be Souls-like. Melee weapons, which is... such as Nor's axe. I don't mind that at all. Flintlock pistols. Pistols. And secondary black powder weapons, including rifles and grenades. Hmm. The axe, for example, is no woodcutter's tool. This brutally effective weapon 
along with an array of other single-handed weapons, provide players with unique combat opportunities. Nice. Each weapon has a different modifier to enhance and change the gameplay. Ah. Oh. So like Flintlock weapons buffs on the, on the weapons? Your arsenal to fight the dead. I'm not sure about the gun, but that's just me. If it's a secondary sort you of restore black powder charge almost parry esque with weapon, damage. that might be quite good. You seem to have a lot of different weapon choices. Secondary weapons are powerful flintlock firearms that require time and skill to reload. Like traditional black powder weapons of the past, they often only fire a single shot before needing to be reloaded with a skill-based reloading Ooh, mechanic. That's nice. It's really clean. Your secondary weapon Done some research. Are only while resting. So preparing in advance and knowing when to deploy them is key to their successful use in mm. combat. Grenades give you new strategic options to deal with enemies. Each type of grenade has a limited number of uses. You can find more grenades okay. by exploring the world. Throwables are always a bonus. You your grenades by resting. I quite like the, the more grenades effect you pick up, on that sword. The more you can throw between rests. They look like a curved sword. Yeah, this, well, sort of curved. I don't know what that enemies is. Enemies can be engaged in a number An of... An orc sword. That's what that reminds me Learning each enemy's moveset and mastering the best attack, counter-attack and defensive moves are key to... So it kind of is used like a parry style weapon, the, the, the gun. You're kind of using it like passively or defensively. A break attack is an attack that cannot be blocked or parried. Oof. It will also leave you vulnerable to follow-up attack. Okay. You can interrupt an enemy break attack with your flintlock arsenal leaving the enemy open to a swift nice. follow-up attack. With the right timing, a regular attack is very souls. Opening the enemy up uh, to combat. counter attacks and extra damage. Like the finisher. The purple bar above the enemy is a priming indicator. Mm -hmm. Once an enemy is fully primed, you can perform a critical attack, which mm. instantly defeats an unarmed enemy. So, sort of like a poise bar then? Oh. Nice. Or I like those finisher, finisher um... Little, Inky's little strike effects. applies the curse of death on enemies, allowing you to build up their prime from a distance before closing in to finish the job. Nice. That's cool. While Inky's curse is active, your melee strikes. I see in the bottom right, Inky well has got damage. his own sort of bar, I in guess, when he's full. Death, you can, you can use him for that death to curse. Inky. Each stone makes his strike apply a different status effect, such as poison or weakness. Yeah, so it goes down when as you're you your applying it, that's quite cool. You will unlock powerful magical abilities called witherings. Inky's withering gauge will build over time. Mm. When it's full, Nor and Inky can fuse together and unleash a devastating ultimate attack. Oh, Armored oh, enemies oh, take oh, reduced oh, damage okay. and are less likely to be I wonder how long it melee. takes for that to buff up. And do you have to use uh, Inky for well, that to buff up, or does he armored. just do it over You'll time? Often need to remove it first by fully priming I love the, using a the, the way he sort of morphs shield in and out of you. Damage from a frontal pretty attack. Cool. You must first remove the shield to attack head on or find other openings. Mm -hmm. Ripping off a shield exposes the enemy to a direct attack. Nice. With a war that has been raging on for so long in Kian, coins and gold have become Very less cool. than your reputation. Reputation is the currency in the world of Flintlock oh. and represents your renown and experience. It can be spent to obtain skills and items. Lovely. Oh, fancy. I wonder if they have upgrades any. Upgrades to your weapons oh. and armor. Cool. So you can add upgrades and the aesthetics change as well. That's Engaging cool. in combat and defeating enemies. I do like that about ways to build some games with the armors that you can buff the up. The combat reputation multiplier rewards you for using unique moves in combat. And it's not just upgrading it to be Each stronger, strike, but it looks like you can get or different... Dodge you even. Build your multiplier and increase the amount of or Not aesthetics, but... Um, I can't think of the word. But be careful. If you take damage, you will lose busy your watch. and the additional reputation that has been gained. You can get different uh, status effects on it. You can it. choose that to bank your good. reputation at any point, and the multiplier will be reset to zero. Oh. Hamlets are settlements around the world that have become overrun with the dead. Defeating the boss will free the hamlet. The people will return to their normal lives and you oh. access to the local coffee shop. Who doesn't Every like coffee? coffee? Shop has a host. Hosts are mysterious creatures who care for the local inhabitants. That's really cool, I love that. 
So basically, kill the boss, give you an extra reset coffee, flask as a reward for buy things, rid of the dead. remove the you'll dead. You'll also gain access to the shop, where you can cash in your reputation to buy clothing items and customise your look. Nice. Since the coffee Almost shop is the central hub of every there, hamlet, style hosts know everything going armor. on in the local area and will offer up rumours wow. which form the basis of Flintlock's side quest. Almost looks like not the same if you game, but the... Rumor, or engage in conversation so with a local character... The, the you've area, the location is very quests. Horizon at the moment. I'm all it for me. These are an excellent way to fully explore an area, Just unlock in that area. inventory items and enhance your experience of the story. Nice. Training, lovely. Oh, that was pretty. Hmm. Even if you're not on a dedicated quest, it's always worth exploring off the main path. Mm -hmm. As there are often more challenging enemies and greater rewards to be had. Oh. Intrigued by the rewards. Hello? What reward are we going to get? Herald's Blade. Nice. I think that's what she was using with the like fire myself, beam on it. Dale, and the rest of the A44 team, thank you for checking out our gameplay summary. We hope you're looking forward to diving in and exploring the world of Flintlock. It looks very clean. Nice. Yeah, I um, I think that was very good. Obviously, I love the companion idea, especially as they are sort of a status effect um, and you can change that and hopefully upgrade him as well so he his status effects last longer. And I loved the at the beginning where she sort of merged into him and was able to traverse the area um, by like jumping or flying or whatever, whatever it was, but yeah. That was good. I am intrigued by this game. I definitely think it's got some original ideas, but obviously the Souls like combat is there, which I'm totally down for anyway. I like the look of some of the areas. There's quite a few NPCs. The coffee shop is a great idea. If you can upgrade and uh, amend and just change your armor as well to whatever status effects or builds that you want to do, that could be very interesting. The different weapons, I wonder how many classes they've got because you're obviously just one person, so you don't choose your class. That's kind of what I get from that. Um, yeah, I'm I'm quietly excited for that one. I think it looks visually really, really good, really polished. Um, the storyline sounds quite good. I'm, I don't get too much from the storyline, to be honest with you. But yeah, I, I think that's a good game. It's a good looking game. RPG out in July. Um, so I think I would put that on my definitely want to check out kind of list. Um, but yeah, tell me what you think. What did you think about the gameplay, the extended trailer? Was there anything that you didn't like the look of? Are you unsure of? Does it sell you? Do you like the idea of companion? Obviously, um, it's always nice to have animals <laughs> in games for me, but I want to know your thoughts. This next one is called The Relic, The First Guardian. Also, this dropped a few days ago, this gameplay trailer. I don't know much about it. I don't know when it's out, um, but it did look quite dark in the Soulsy style um, that I like and I'm used to. So it instantly made me think, bing, I want to have a look at that. I want to have a talk about that. So let's just get straight into it um, and have a look at the gameplay trailer. The Relic, the first Guardian, is currently under intensive development ahead of its release on consoles, PC. Nice. Please look forward to more updates. You can see what I mean by the Souls dark drama, battle, combat. Even the movement is almost exactly like Souls. Ah. The music is like this then. That's, that's on it for me, that's great. Wow. I think 
as a little teaser of the actual play, I guess, the gameplay. So dramatic. See how much this pulls me in. Hello, everyone. Hello. This is Project Cloud Games. The Relic. The first Guardian is a semi-open world action. Mm -hmm. that allows players to freely adventure in a fantasy world. Semi-open. Okay. In the game, you can enjoy the thrill of exploring an apocalyptic fantasy world and a variety of action-packed experiences. Mm -hmm. Today, along with the gameplay video, I will introduce some of the things you can experience okay. in the world of the Relic. Before we start, there are five types of weapons that players can choose okay. from which form the basis of the action. Nice. Each weapon has its unique skills, which can be changed according to your playstyle. Oh. Additionally, there are universal skills that can be used regardless of the weapon, allowing for a diverse skill setup. So we're thinking like incantations or spells that looks like that, doesn't it? Maybe some sort of talisman. One-handed weapons and shields are specialised for integrated offence and defence, offering balanced gameplay. Parrying. <laughs> shields provide stable protection, while one-handed weapons subdue enemies in front. Can you dual wield, do you reckon? Long swords okay. possess a long reach mm -hmm. and strong attack power. I like that. Special attacks activate an attack power buff, inflicting significant damage on enemies. So that must be the second weapon type? Whoa. Daggers enable rapid consecutive attacks, emphasising agility. Players can skillfully dodge an attack, nice. leading the combat flow Some of the combat styles look really good. It's equipped with long reach, employ gravity magic. Huh. While their attack speed is slow, each successful hit reduces the cooldown of skills. Okay. Not sure I would use that. It probably would be too slow for me personally, but it's quite cool that it has that gravity effect. Deliver powerful attacks. Two-handed. Enemy stamina. Nice. Kind of something that I would slow, probably choose to. Strong hits leave to enemies to. defenseless, leveraging this trait in combat. Big boys, big bonk boys, love that. In the relic, characters do not have levels. Instead, runes, item, crafting are used to strengthen the character. Oh, okay. Interesting. Players will embark on an adventure as Guardian to collect the pieces of the Great Relics and close the void in the ruined continent of Arsilthus, which has been devastated by monsters called Brutal. Mm. Please don't take it the wrong way. I'm just saying this because you might not know. Priest Egwis of Tis This journey allows players to meet various people in different regions and experience intriguing stories. Cool, I like that. So different side quests and things. Obviously, everybody kind of expects that these days. I definitely want that out of the game. Front enemies, head on or gain an advantage using surrounding objects. Always good. With various situations arising from monsters, I like that the combat and involves the environment. I always the game like that. Diverse gameplay experiences. Random During their random. adventures, players will encounter a variety of situations in different locations. Mm -hmm. Even in the same place, different scenarios can occur, allowing for a more varied adventure. Players will explore different regions. It looks fantastic. With its unique the surroundings, the environment, different vibes within the same area. The lighting, depending on the situation, it does look very good. Location. Got to always love a, a laughing boss. Nice. As you adventure, your exploration dungeons, naturally classic. leads to dungeons. Inside the dungeons, there are various situations and powerful bosses. Mm -hmm. 
Clearing a dungeon will connect you to another place, allowing you to continue your adventure. That's cool. Links to different different areas. Beyond what we introduced. I like that idea. Look forward to discovering many bosses, rooms, mm. combat. It'd be interesting to see how many bosses there are in this game, including obviously dungeon bosses, etc. Always love a screaming lady. Oh. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> I guess it's good to have a semi open world if you're always traversing, like running and walking so you don't have a, a steed so to speak probably would make a lot of sense it not being a massive open world game i do like some of the combat that we're, oh, that we're seeing especially with the knives very acrobatic although i whoa probably would not use that 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 boss design was terrifying. Wow! I really hope they have some uh, good music for the big bosses as well. It's always an absolute given for me. There's such a high expectation I feel with uh, big games now, and the music is so important. Especially if. It is like a Dark Souls style game where the combat is, you know, interesting. Um, the combat is more difficult or known to be difficult uh, with bosses that you would probably need to go back and fight them a few times. The music always helps with that, you know. I wonder if you have stops or save points that you can quick travel. So I haven't seen any of that at the moment. I'm really intrigued by this not leveling up, but you level up other things, other attributes, skills, um, hopefully weapons, I'm assuming, um, and that you'd find weapons in the world. That to me is very interesting. Obviously, they're sort of trying to be a little bit different. It's, it must be so hard now to... Uh, you know, think of niches in a game. Look at that. It does look fantastic. The sun. I like it a lot. Oh, what's that? Waypoint? Maybe. Hmm. Huh. Okay. Interesting. That last bit was interesting. I was just talking about whether there was points of stopping and, um, you know, bonfires or uh, points where you can travel to and from. But it didn't, I mean, it does look like it's marked up. So maybe that is what it is. And then he does something to sit, I don't know. But yeah, what do you think about that? I think it's very dark. Um, it, it has the soul's feel for me, the dark gothic -y. Well, not gothic -y, but that sort of, um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, feel to it. The bosses look very similar to what I would expect in those types of games. The dungeons. Really intrigued by this non-leveling up of a person, of yourself, of your character. Um, the different, I think it was five different um, like uh, weapon classes you can have. Pretty, I would say basic, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. It didn't look like there was any specific sorcery or mage, but more like incantations and that spear um, had the gravity pull or something on there specifically. I wonder if different spears would have different um, spells or incantations or AOEs with them. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I am definitely intrigued that obviously that's still in some sort of development so that we don't have a specific uh, date or anything on that. I think it's on all platforms from what I understand and it's Project Cloud Games. So 
yeah, RPG, sort of semi-open world, they specifically said. It looks like you're just traversing yourself, so there's no horse or anything like that. I'm not sure about the quick travel, anything, but I'm definitely interested in that. I think I'm actually more intrigued by that just because of the feel of the game. Um, not that I'm, like, into just dark dark games but that that does something for me uh the music was fantastic i really really enjoyed that so i'm hoping that is going to be for bosses and maybe certain areas or just background music when you're going through the different areas of worlds the npcs look quite interesting different side quests stories etc so that would be interesting to see if that has any effect on the actual main quest storyline or not it may just be that you can go and find unique weapons or you get rewards afterwards, I'm not sure. But yeah, I, I would say I'm very interested in that. I'm going to keep an eye on any sort of word of how that's coming on in development, if there's any sort of going to be any release date. But I like the fact that a lot of that looked like in-game play. Um, so you get to see really what the combat's like, the, the different areas, the different worlds, the background, the environment, the different characters um, with the NPCs, the different bosses, the side bosses. It looks like there's a lot of bosses there. If you think about the dungeons, the main bosses for the story, just walking around and you find mobs. So yeah, I'm definitely interested in that. Let me know what you think. Do you like that style? Are you into Souls games at all? Um, I mean, I have over the last year of doing this, um, really do love Souls games. Elden Ring was the first one that I attempted to play. Um, and then since then it's just flourished and it has a special place in my heart now. So I will always gravitate more towards these types of games, RPG games as well. Um, but let me know your thoughts. What do you think? So this last one has, I think, been out, or the trailer came out a while ago now, but I had not seen anything about it. As I said, with all of these different games coming out, it can be tough to keep on top of everything that's being released, especially if they're not featured in any sort of festivals or people aren't talking about it. Other games that are massive do kind of take over, but this one looked very interesting to me. Um, I think it was about 10 months ago this trailer came out, so quite a while but I definitely want to give it some time. I want to watch the trailer properly. This is a PS5 exclusive, so it's Sony PS PlayStation only on this one. Um, it's by Gimatsu, the, the gaming um, company. So let's get into it. It's called Daba Land of Water Scar. Quite a big name, so... Or Daba, 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 Let's not. Nice. That looks like Horizon to me, but very cool. Well, it did, and then it's more, more maybe softer, softer features. So it looks slightly different to the other two games, in my opinion, but that, I also like the look of it. Don't know, it kind of feels softer. So I don't think we're going to get any... Oh, no. I'll take it back. I was just about to say any combat, but... Again, this is definitely Souls... Souls-like combat it, to me. But the character designs, the boss... I think this might be a boss. Designs look very different. Almost anime, in a sense, to me, but I like it. Oh, so it looks like you can be different, maybe different characters, classes, maybe different classes. I don't know how much you can sort of modify yourself. Wow. The bosses look straight out of a Souls game. Amazing. Really like that. Music's great, which always helps. Oh, so one of two, maybe? 
I'm not sure. Maybe it's kind of like how Assassins is going, where you have two two characters you can choose from. Hello. Sorry, my <laughs> my dog is like. Um, hello. <laughs> Right, so what do we think about that? I know it doesn't give you a lot, obviously the other two trailers were extended and gave you a real, real look at the um, gameplay, but that's what I could find for Dabba, uh, Land of the Water Scar, Water Scar. But I think that looks really good. I like the different style and the different design, or especially of the two characters that you could possibly play. I don't really know anything about this. I don't know when or if there is a release date for this either. I'm, I'm assuming that these games are, if they're not confirmed, between 2024 and maybe 2025, most likely. This was 10 months ago, so I'm hoping it would be maybe the end of this year. I might have to have a look, because actually, I quite like the the different environment, so the style and the aesthetics of the environment looks different to me, but the bosses and the combat definitely brings souls. Absolutely, looks great. It doesn't really tell me anything about the story, what's going on, what's happening, who you are, who your companion is, or maybe the other person that you can choose is. Um, they kind of look like they had different fighting styles, so maybe one is more sort of, I don't know, weapons, big bonk, uh, maybe even decks, and the other one is more passive arrows, um, mage maybe, but I'm just speculating now, I don't know. Um, so it's not a lot to go on, but let me know what your thoughts are. I, that definitely is one that I actually am interested in. I might, depending on how big these games are, the, the second one, I think the Relic, probably would be more a, of a streaming game because it's kind of semi-open world. It looks quite big and I think that would be great to stream. The third one, I, maybe a play through like an actual video series but let me know your thoughts what would you like to see what would you be interested in playing yourself what did you like or didn't you like about these games are you into souls games i don't know i definitely am it's definitely one of my favorite genres so anything new with a slight niche to it I'm all for. So that's why I chose these three games. I would like to know what you think. I think all three of them are worthy of a trailer reaction at least um, and to be keeping an eye on. We are going to be flooded with games over the next year. I do know that. Like GTA, Assassins is coming out soon, which looks phenomenal. And I'm actually really excited for that Assassins game. I have not been excited for a long time. So that to me is going to be... Um, and obviously Elden Ring drops less than a week. I cannot wait. If you want to come in on stream, I will be streaming that midnight on Friday for a few hours, taking a break, maybe some sleep. Then I'll be coming back Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. I will be streaming that bad boy all the time. So please come in, drop on by, say hello, give us a like, subscribe if you want to, and also hit that notification bell if you want to be uh, notified when I'm doing trailer reactions, reveals, gaming, streaming. It is all on my channel. I'm trying to bring you as much content as I can. Thank you for all of your support so far. It's been greatly appreciated. Over the last month, I have seen a flurry of people just being so wonderful and positive and coming in on stream, telling me your thoughts, which is what I want. I would love to build a community around gaming. We're all here because we love gaming. So why not all be together? experience these things together, talk about it, uh, just love it. Thank you so much. Take care and until next time, ta-ta!